chapter 5.3 <clears throat> deals with finding the derivative of an inverse. So the idea of this section is we're trying to find the derivative of an inverse without knowing the inverse itself. So we're going to start with some function. It's going to ask us find the der find the uh, derivative of the inverse of this function in a given place. So without knowing the inverse itself is the key. Okay. So the mechanics of this section are actually pretty simple. There's a there's a formula that we need to know and there's a process we can follow. Um, the concept I think is a is a little bit confusing sometimes. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on the concept and then uh, get to the to the examples themselves. So we're going to say that f and g are inverses. All right, so g is the inverse of f. That's how the notation would look. And remember that if a point 28 is on f, then the point 82 is on the inverse of f. Okay, so we just switch the x and the y values. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these two situations. We're going to look at f is the cube root of x, g of x is the inverse of that, so it's x cubed. And we're going to look on f, we're going to look at the point 82, and on g we're going to look at the point 28. Right? So you can see the work here, and really I'm going to do that so that I can show you this graph. If I look at the point 82, um, here is f of x, and here is g of x. If I look at the point 82 on f of x, it's out here, and the point 28 on g of x is there. So you can see that these functions are reflections of one another across the line y equals x. If we have a point on f of x, if we reflect it in y of x, um, I'm sorry, if we reflect it in y equals x, we get the inverse, and here the coordinates are 8, 2, and that point reflected across y equals x gives us its inverse, and the point there is 2, 8. Okay, so if we just work through, try to focus on one of these at a time, if we take f, f of x, it's the cube root of x, and we find f prime of x, then we get 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds, and we can simplify that this way. And if we want the slope at x equals 8 of f, that's f prime of 8, so I plug in 8 to the, to the derivative, simplify it out to 1 twelfth. So we can use that to think about the slope of the tangent line here is something like that. There's our tangent line. That has a slope of 1 12th. All right, if we look at g of x, g of x is x cubed. Take the derivative, it's 3x squared. Plug in x equals 2, and we get 12. So what that tells us is the slope of that tangent line there. It's very steep. The slope of that tangent line there is 12. All right, so really what I'm trying to show you here in this example is just that f prime of 8 is the reciprocal of g prime of 2. Right? So if we think about this as this point reflected across here gives us that point, and the slope at this point on f is the reciprocal of the slope of the, of the function at the slope. Sorry. Let's start that over. The slope at the point a2 of f of x is equal to the reciprocal of the slope of g of x at the point 2, 8. Right. So we can, we can show this algebraically using calculus if we think about the definition of an inverse. So this is really half the definition. The other definition is that g of f of x has to also equal x. But for our purposes, this is the form that works the best for us. So if I want um, if these two are inverses, then f of g of x is going to give me x. Now, if I differentiate both sides of that, on this side here, this looks just like the definition of the chain rule. So we're going to use the chain rule. It's f prime of g of x times g prime of x, and the, der the derivative of x is just 1. 
Now if I solve for g prime of x, I get this. g prime of x equals 1 over f prime of g of x. This is really the formula that we're going to use as we work through it. All right, so you have a choice. You can memorize this formula. It's not all that hard to memorize. If you're like me and you're really bad at memorizing things, it's a pretty easy thing to refigure out. All right, so this is the formula that we're going to use. So note that in order to find the slope of the inverse, we don't actually need to find the inverse function. So resist that temptation. It's very tempting when we get questions like this that says, here's some function. What's the slope of its inverse at a given place? But the f at least for me, I know my first reaction is, well, I'll find the, the inverse, and then I'll take its derivative, and I'll plug in the x value. But that doesn't often work because most of the time the functions they give us don't have uh, s simple inverses or functions for which it's it's easy to find the inverse. So try to revert, try to uh, resist that temptation.